Hello and welcome to Community News from the Hill and Front Page. I'm your host, Erica Fox, and today we are excited that we have an American journalist with us, an author. He's also an aficionado when it comes to social media and a proponent of civil rights and, of course, HBCUs. And we'd like to welcome to Alabama A&M University, WJAB and WJAB TV, Mr. Roland S. Martin. How are you? All good. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you here. You're just so busy everywhere. Let's just get <laughs> right into the thick of things. You're a graduate of Texas A&M University, mm -hmm. and I'm a graduate of Alabama A&M University. PWIs or HBCUs, which one is a better proponent for a black student? It doesn't matter. I mean, for me, uh, it's uh, you get education. Uh, and so I think, we make, I think we make a mistake when we start um, uh, playing the games of, well, uh, is this better or is that better? Uh, there are some people out there who, uh, depending upon what they want to do in their life, uh, they can go to community college two-year institution, they can go to a junior college. Uh, you can go to a four-year, you can go to a private, you can go to the public, you go to a state university. Uh, and so, uh, to me, the question is, what's important to you as the student? Mm -hmm. um, what's best for you? What is it about that particular campus, that culture? What is it about uh, the academics of that university? A lot of people out there uh, who, go to, who, who will go to university uh, based upon, well, that's where my parents went, but the question is, is that the best university for you? Mm -hmm based upon what your major is. Um, when I was at Texas A&M, we had a um, department of journalism. And when they, when they, they eventually, when I left, they eventually got rid of the department of journalism and people all up in arms. But when they did a survey, two thirds of the students who were in the department of journalism did not want to be journalists. They actually had flunked out of other colleges mm. and they just wanted a degree from A&M, so therefore they said, fine, I'll be a journalism major. So uh, you're supposed to go to a school based upon the career that you want to go into. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's really, to me, how folks should be making those decisions. Um, I think we make a mistake if you go to a predominantly white institution and then you look down on HBCU students. But then when you have HBCU folks who mm -hmm. then so somehow question the blackness of black folks who go to a PWI. Mm -hmm. Now, so it, it's interesting to me though that we'll have this conversation about, uh, well, why don't you go to uh, this so-called white school, but, we'll, but we have no problem with our major athletes going there. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a senior at uh, Yates High School, it was very interesting. Uh, Luther Booker was our uh, football coach, legendary football coach, uh, Yates High School. And so uh, he was a Prairie View A&M graduate. And so he stopped me and he said, you know, I understand you're going to Texas A&M. He said, you know, this is a doggone shame. You know, all of our best and brightest going to these white schools. And I said, really? I said, aren't you the same coach who wants Nebraska and OU and A&M and Texas and Iowa in Miami recruiting your top football players? Hmm. I said, so you want the major powerhouse universities recruiting your top football talent, mm -hmm. but then you don't want top students, because I was a top communication student in a magnet school, going to an A&M. I said, how much damn sense does that make? <laughs> mm -hmm. And he just looked at me, again, I, was, I was a high school senior, he just sort of looked at me and it was like, Okay, I said, yeah, and I walked off. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Mm -hmm. But then what was interesting, and again, this is what happens when, when we think what is ours is less than. Mm -hmm. I had another, there was another teacher, and uh, he didn't teach me. Um, and he was married to a, a woman whose mother went to my church. And so one day he stops me in the hallway, and he says, you know, I understand you're going to Texas A&M. He goes, you know, do, do, you really, do you really think you're ready for that? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sorry, what do you mean? Am I ready for it? He says, well, well, do you think you ought to go to Prairie View for a couple of years first? I said, really? I said, so basically what you're telling me is the education that I've gotten at this black high school for the last four years has not adequately prepared me to go to any university. Mm. So you're actually saying that this is a subpar education. Mm -hmm. And then what you're also saying is that Prairie View is not as rigorous as Texas A&M is. So you think I ought to go to Prairie View first before going to A&M. I said, I need you to explain to me how all that goes together. Wasn't able to do that. I'm like, wasn't able to do it. Mm -hmm. Because he, because he did, because he, he, 
he was admitting mm -hmm. that what the education I got there in his eyes was not adequate to be able to compete at a major institution. From the get go, from freshman year. And I said, mm -hmm. so that's an indictment on you and the school and the system. Mm -hmm. And so we and so 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 the issue for me is I don't care where you go to school. Mm -hmm. If if you want to go to college, I want you to go to a place where you can learn, where you can thrive, where it can benefit you and that fits you. Something may fit one student. Alabama A and M may fit a student. Mm -hmm. Alabama State may fit a student. UAB or Alabama so it's all you as the individual that's what it boils down to and so I think we make a mistake when we sort of want to shoehorn folks into sort of the same same ideal they're just like there are some people based upon their life situation it might be better for them to go to an online school that's true. so again that's the mistake I think we make when we sort of have that sort of back and forth debate mm -hmm. I want to talk about millennials in, in voting, and especially the high school kids that are about to graduate. We need to get them registered to, to vote. And I know you're a huge proponent of voting. I was watching your live stream yesterday, and how do you empower millennials to get out and to vote? Well, the first, the first question, before I, would, before I would ask the question, how do you empower a millennial or a Gen Y or a Gen Xer or whatever you want to call, mm -hmm. call it, to vote, the question then becomes, who have they been modeling prior to becoming 18? So the question becomes, did they have a mother or a father or grandparent or aunt or uncle who brought them to the voting booth? Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like when my, so one of my nieces, uh, my oldest niece, um, her and her sister have been living with, with me since they were five and two, and so she came to me one day, she probably was nine or ten, and she said, um, um, Uncle Roro, can I watch TV? And I shot a look, and she went, read a book. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. and I said, that's a good answer. Now, the only way she would have responded that way is first, I've made that perfectly clear beforehand, you need to be reading versus watching TV. Two, she would have had to have seen me actually do it as well. So I've got, I'm sitting there with a thousand books in my house, so, mm -hmm. so she's surrounded by books. So if you don't model what you want someone to do, then it's no shock they're not going to be able to do it. If you go to the National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, uh, formerly the Lorraine, Lorraine Motel, they've got, there's a, there's, there's, there's a placard there. Uh, and it was a quote from a young black girl from 64, 65. And it says, all I want for my 18th birthday is a voter registration card. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a mentality. So what should be happening is we had lots of people who brought their kids with them when they voted for Obama for president. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't be a wants thing. You should be saying, I will bring my kids when I'm voting for the school board election, for the city council election, the county commissioner, the state rep, the state senate, the gubernatorial, the congressional, the U.S. senatorial, and the presidential. So now if you are a child, it is now ingrained in your spirit that this is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me growing up, uh, my parents worked on campaigns. Uh, so. I, I was at polling booths passing stuff out. We were there all day. We were putting up yard signs. So that's a part of who I am. So to me, that's where you start. Mm -hmm. The second piece is, I think, when you to get people to understand voting, you have to use language that someone understands. So I think one of the mistakes when we talk about voting today, we'll, we'll say things like, uh, you should vote because somebody died for you had a right to vote. Mm -hmm. Factually correct, mm -hmm. but I'm but I'm bringing. So if you say Jimmy Lee Jackson was killed uh, in a night march um, in Selma, that's what led to the Bloody Sunday March, which led to the Selma to, to Montgomery March. Okay, so I'm using an example from 1964-65. All right. So the question is, how can I hit somebody? So I was talking to a group. And they were saying, hey, people, as they hit me on social media, and it's also in person, they were saying, well, what would you say? Mm -hmm. I would say, 
Trayvon can't vote, but you can. Rakia Boyd can't vote, but you can. Ayanna Jones can't vote, but you can. Alton Sterling can't vote, but you can. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm doing, I'm actually, so I'm, so I'm taking individuals, cases that we have seen in the last three, four years, mm -hmm. that people understand, they remember, and then saying they can't because they're dead, but you can. So I'm using the exact same um, uh, focus, but I'm using contemporary names where somebody goes, oh, now I get it. They can and relate to that, especially right. as millennials. Right, so you have, so I, so I think, so part of that is in terms of how do you speak to folks about why, and, and the last point is this here, and we do a bad job at this, how do you connect dots? Mm -hmm. Because the, the average person is, does not live and breathe this every day. Mm -hmm. And so you have people walk around. That's why you got all these crazy people who vote, who vote for Republicans who say, I want government out of my life. And I go, you, you do know government has a role in every facet of your life. Mm -hmm. People are like, no, they don't. Like, actually, you, you do. Mm -hmm. So the water you drink, right. that's EPA and water quality. Uh, the air you breathe. Uh, when you go take your kids to a, um, to a park, uh, you do want government to be sure that you don't have lead in that paint. Mm -hmm. So therefore your kids don't get lead poisoned when they're playing on, playing on playgrounds. Right. So you take people through that. So I think you have to also get people to understand there's a direct correlation. So I was talking to one young woman in North Carolina, she, and this was 2016, she said, well, you know, I, I just don't see any purpose in voting. I said, really? I said, so she says, well, I don't like Hillary Clinton, I don't like Donald Trump. I said, you're a college student, right? I said, have you looked at the policies of each one of them when it comes to student loans? I said, have you heard what each one of them are saying when it comes to paying back student loan debt? And she, and she said, well, I have. And I said, well, you might want to pay attention to that because you may not ignore everything else. I said, but one of those two individuals mm -hmm. will have an impact on something that directly impacts you. Right. So, so, so she's sitting here. She was only, and I think it was so interesting, she was only thinking about, she's like, yeah, but Hillary said this about predators. I said, yeah. I said, I got you. And, I, and so I said, so you're upset by Hillary Clinton's comment about predators from the Clinton crime bill, right? She says, yes. I said, did you vote for Obama and Biden? She says, yes. I said, did you know that Joe Biden was the author of the very crime bill you criticized Hillary Clinton about? See, again, so she was only looking at criminal justice, mm -hmm. but she wasn't looking at the impact that whoever's president is going to have on other things that could impact her life. Mm -hmm. Speaking of president, you said that people need to not focus on Oprah running in 2020. No, nah, no. Nah. What For, should they be focusing on? You got elections happening in, in a month. Mm -hmm. You got primaries that are coming up. Uh, you've got uh, Stacey Abrams is running for governor on the Democratic side in Georgia. That primary is in March. Mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, 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 Andrew Gillum who's running for governor in Florida uh, on the Democratic side. That primary is in August. Mm -hmm. You've got county commissioners races, you've got state races, you've got, you've got primaries happening before you get the general election. That's coming up in February, March, April. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, I'm, if I'm wasting my time consumed about well, whether Oprah's gonna run 2020, that I'm ignoring the very races, mm -hmm. that are actually gonna have a more of an impact on my life. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at a lot of these district attorney races, so you got people who, who are concerned about criminal justice reform. Well, you got new progressive DAs in Cook County in Chicago, uh, in Cleveland, uh, Aaron Masayala, the first black uh, state's attorney in Florida. Uh, you've got uh, the guy just elected in Philadelphia. You've got Marilyn Mosby in Baltimore. Uh, you know, Ken Thompson passed away in Brooklyn, uh, but, they, but he also got replaced. So I can go down the line. Mm -hmm. These are all district attorneys. Mm -hmm. And so if you're focused on Oprah, but you're ignoring who's going to be the DA, but then all of a sudden you're mad about criminal justice reform, mm -hmm. uh, your priorities are wrong. And so I'm telling people, focus on what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. I can't work, I can't get to 2020 unless I get out of 2018. And I still gotta get through 2019. So I'm saying focus on those local races happening uh, now, mm -hmm. and then you begin to say, and then you get to 2019, then you say fine, then I get around to 2020. Mm -hmm. But you're not voting on anything uh, uh, for 2020 race until 2020. Right, right. It's a waste of my time. Let me ask you this uh, one last question. STEM is important, of course, science, technology, engineering, and math. What about those students that need to major in like business and marketing because we need them on the executive boards so incidents like H&M don't happen again? 
Well, think? actually, actually, I. STEM is important. Actually, you can call it STEAM if you throw in arts as well. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the reality. Reverend Jackson's talked about this here. Sixty percent of all Silicon Valley, jo Valley jobs have nothing to do with engineering. Mm -hmm. See, so so we, we forget. I mean, I, I I get all the focus on STEM, mm -hmm. but not all jobs in the future are going to be STEM related. They're not. They're just not. Right. I mean, you. I mean, those companies still employ PR companies, marketing companies, they still employ media companies, uh, they still employ, I mean, to take your pick. So all, the, all those other jobs that still exist are there. I'll give you an example, just like you talk about Hollywood. Everybody, so you got Black Panther coming out. So everybody's, I mean, all excited about Black Panther coming out and I mean, they're buying tickets left and right. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. And folks are focused on what's happening in front of the camera, who is the director. Mm -hmm. But if people have ever, ever, ever actually gone to uh, a film set do you know who gets paid well? The person with the transportation contract. That's a limousine company. Mm -hmm. The person with the catering contract. Right. That's food services. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple, the construction, the people who build sets, that's construction. Uh, you may not think about construction in terms of movies. And the thing is, what's so crazy about it is, those folks, they work on six, eight, ten movies a year. When I was talking to uh, Malcolm Lee, uh, and I was talking to, um, uh, why well, this me directed almost Christmas? Uh, he's gonna kill me, uh, David. He said I might do one movie a year. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to be working on six, eight movies, ten movies a year. Uh, costume, same thing as well. And so we have to actually broaden the minds. I think for a lot of African Americans in terms of what are the available jobs. Uh, what I tell folks what they should be doing, like like I, I, this happening with students all the time. I'll meet a student and they'll say I'm majoring in this. And I'm going, why are you majoring in that? They go, what do you mean? I, said, I like it. I'm like, yeah, but you're majoring in something where you're going to have diminished returns over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so I tell anybody what you should be doing is going to the, 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 the Bureau of Labor Statistics and looking at what are the top 10 job growth areas every single month. So when the jobs reports come out every single month, we focus on the unemployment rate. Did it go up? Did it go down? How many jobs were created? But, 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 that, but BLS also lists the top 10 areas where jobs were created. Mm -hmm. That's what you should be focused on because that's gonna tell you uh, what sectors are decreasing, what sectors are increasing. Uh, and so you look at right now, so, so what's happening now, you know, a significant number of men uh, all of a sudden are majoring in nursing. Really? Why? Because mm -hmm. you don't have enough nurses mm -hmm. in unavailable jobs. They're sitting there because they can't fill the jobs. They don't have enough people to fill the jobs because we're also, folks are also living longer. And so now all of a sudden, so health, the healthcare industry is exploding, those are, those are available jobs. And so, but you, but you also gotta go beyond just how we think about it. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, a nurse or the, at, at the school or a hospital, no, you have private nurses as well. And so, and so it, it, it's, it's a totally different view of how you look at jobs. So it's just like, I don't, I don't understand when I meet somebody and say I'm a history major. What, I go, what the hell job is that? So, I, so I, I apply a major to a job. Now, there are other people in academia who get upset when I mm -hmm. say this, uh, and they say, well, no, but college is about, I, I don't want to hear the rest of that crap. Mm -hmm. College is for me to get a sheet of paper to go get a job, mm -hmm. okay? All that other stuff, that's great, okay? That was all good and well when I was at Texas a and I was there for a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. I don't care about anything else. That sheet of paper leads me to do this. Uh, and so you have to think about jobs that way in terms of how am I going to take care of my family? So that's why you, but, but also we have to, because your first question dealt with, you know, um, the issue of uh, PWIs and HBCUs. Mm -hmm. But it also goes to, okay, there are people, black, white, Asian, Latino, does not matter, who are not supposed to be at four-year institutions. That's just not who they are. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go through, if you go, now again, just step back for a second and look at available jobs in the country. So you look at outsourcing that's going on. You look at robotics. You look at all of that. One of the jobs that is one of the most high, consistently high paying jobs in the country, you're not going to get a robot to replace it. And they can't transfer it to China. That is a master electrician and a master plumber. Show me anybody who's making six figures. And if they totally get stopped up, 
sweet. They gonna call a master plumber. That's right. You got ma You got you got uh, uh, you got folks who literally are master electricians making a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Now here's the problem. We have been sold this whole bill of goods of no 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 no. You you got to go to college. You got to do. A I get it. But if you step back and say, wait a minute, do I have a skill? Okay, so if I look at forcing somebody to go to college, and, they'll, and, and we know some people who can cut it in college and those who can't. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm -hmm. We can hate testing all we want to, but we know that. But if you step back and go, there are jobs in our society that different people are going to do. I'm gonna tell you right now. So in, in, so in Chicago, when I worked there, my wife was the uh, vice president of college at Kennedy King College. That's cool. There were a number of people who were retiring, the people who climbed the utility poles, they were retiring. Uh, and so all of a sudden they had a shortage. So ComEd creates a program for people to, it was a nine month training program. Mm -hmm. And so if you completed the nine month certification, then you got hired. Starting salary was $70,000. You throw in overtime, they were making $120,000. Now, I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. If you say, here's a job, the starting salary is 70 grand, I can make up to $120,000. I'm not gonna sit here and turn my nose up at it. But what happens is we say, yeah, but you know, but that's not, that's, that's not, that's, well, that, that's a blue collar job. It's a job. But see, we get caught up in, uh, we get caught up in this whole idea of, well, um, uh, 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 my mama, but wants to be able to say, I go to so-and-so, or, or I go to this school, that school. I don't care about all that. Mm -hmm. My deal is, how are you preparing yourself for the future and your family? And there are a lot of people I know right now who got multiple degrees, who are broke as hell, and they cannot find a $40,000 job because they are highly educated, but they also have a whole lot of debt because they never thought about what am I going to do when I get that sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. They were focused on the sheet of paper. And what I'm saying is you better pay attention to what's the job you will do after you get the sheet of paper. That's right. Well, we have to close out here. Can you tell us where to find you? I know there's several platforms. I'm, I'm all media. over. So they can <laughs> Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Roland S. Martin, also on Facebook as well. And of course, my site is RolandSMartin.com. I'm easy to find. If you say you can't find me, you're lying. And YouTube, especially on YouTube, want people to YouTube as well. On yep. YouTube, we thank you so much, Roland Martin. He's here as a Appreciate part of the it. Beyond Normal Lecture Series here at Alabama a and University, and we hope that you will come out, hear some more from him. Just a different perspective in the 21st century. Thank you very much. Appreciate it for being a part of Community News from the Hill and Front Page here at Alabama A&M University.